My name is Devin Novlin. I'm with your Modern Sporting Rifles course, uh, and today we have a assignment based on the AR platforms. Uh, so outside research to identify two interesting facts regarding the history of the AR, I think one of the big ones, and they kind of mentioned it a little bit in the course text, but not completely, is the, the patent on the AR-15. Uh, it was originally designed by Armalite, sold to Colt, uh, and then in the 1970s that patent expired, allowing other manufacturers to make that weapons platform. And that's why we see a lot of the different manufacturers that are designing AR-15s today. Um, I mean, there's there's tons of them, uh, some that most of us don't even know. And the, um, the ability of that patent expiring in the 70s, you know, nearly 50-something years ago, uh, is really part of the reason I think we have so much competition in the AR platforms. Nowadays, a cheap AR is so much better than what it was 15, 20 years ago because the competition is there. I'm not saying that you can't run across a bad egg every once in a while, uh, but in general, I feel the standards are pretty good. And, and because of that competition and the fact that it has that mil-spec kind of standard to it, uh, it allows for a lot of compatibility between multiple different platforms. Uh, the other one I thought was always interesting, uh, and I don't know how much of this is, is not widely known, is that you know, AR, the Armalite rifle, you know, the, uh, we have a tendency of referencing it. Even in our course material, we say AR, AR, AR. We all automatically kind of know what we're talking about. Uh, but I think one of the things that's noteworthy with the history of the ARs, the original ARs, you know, the original Armalite rifles weren't the rifles we see today. Uh, they were, in fact, you know, semi-automatic 22 caliber survival rifles. Or if you go to the AR-1, it's a bolt-action uh, scout sniper rifle. And I think that that matters a little bit, especially if you're talking about uh, those kind of platforms in, in certain, cir cir certain circles. Uh, especially if you're a product knowledge expert, being able to identify those things and kind of really relaying those things like, hey, this is a modern sporting rifle. It's not necessarily a military assault rifle. Uh, these, are, these are different things that I think we see a lot. Uh, as far as the uh, cartridge that I think is the best, the short answer on that is it depends on the platform and what you're trying to do with it. I think the 5.56 five, is a good one because of its uh, readily availability it is a pretty good performing little cartridge, uh, and you can do quite a bit with that thing. Um, you know, 300 Blackout with its subsonic stuff is good. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff. I'm sure the 277 Fury that's being released by SIG as the military replacement, that one's going to probably have some very big prevalence. If I had to pick one that I thought was really good as an up-and-coming thing for the new platforms, uh, and that I would like to one day build, I haven't built it yet, I've been doing a lot of research on it, is the 6 Arc. Uh, I kind of get the vibe that I did with the 6.5 Creedmoor and the bolt guns. Uh, and, you know, basically it's a, a cartridge that you could readily buy off the shelf. And if you bought the right rifle and had a good scope, you could engage targets at a thousand yards uh, without having to hand load, without having to hand build a rifle and things like that nature. And so I'm curious to see how it goes. I think that's going to be a contender for what may be my favorite cartridge. Um, I don't necessarily say that that's the best. I think it's it all comes back to personal preference. Uh, anyways, that's it for mine. Uh, I appreciate it. And yeah, thank you.